Henley Saturday is, of course, semi-final day. It's a chance for everyone to get dressed up, head into the stewards' enclosure to watch some of the best racing that the regatta has to offer. A couple of hours ago, during the lunch break, this was a sea of power picnickers. It doesn't get more quintessentially British than that. No one will talk about it, but there is an unofficial competition for the most garish blazer on display at the regatta. It's very important that the stripes on the blazer and the tie don't match at all. The rules for the women's competition are even more complicated, but they do involve hats, handbags, and of course, being Henley, hemlines. The stakes are high in the picnics as well. It's got to involve salmon, strawberries, and you really must bring your A-game in volavant. When the food has been dispensed with, it's time to turn our attention through those gates and to the racing. In the men's single skulls, the Diamond Challenge skulls, it's been a bit of a bloodbath with both Drysdale and Borch, last year's finalists, both falling by the wayside. On the women's side, the Princess Royal, it's been a bit more predictable this year. But with Twig and Dimchenko joining in this semi-final, another giant had to fall. Well, Emma Twig here is reacting well under pressure from the Ukrainian Diana Dimchenko. But has regained her composure after a few wobbles past Temple Island with the steering. Well, Emma Twig here enjoying more than a length lead on Jim Kenko. Looking very relaxed into the flow of the race now. Jim Kenko pushing in front of Stewart just to keep Emma Twig honest, and it's a good push, but I don't think it'll have an impact on the result because Twig is very aware of Jim Kenko's place. And the Ukrainian, well, she has another She's glance on her shoulder. Now she is giving it She's to somebody. She's trying to put under pressure. And this could be Whoa. one of those amazing She's turnarounds big time. right at the end. Can Dimchenko turn this race around in the final few strokes up against Twig? Not quite. Half a length it was in the end, but that was a frantic finish from the Ukrainian, who obviously had saved a bit, kept in the race and made it a terrific finish. Wow, that was a little bit of panic there. If you can fight your way through the crowd down to the river, you're going to see some outstanding racing. And this next one was no exception. It was Brooks versus Harvard in the Prince Albert. This is student Cox Tours, and it went down to the wire. Who starts this one as favourite, Mark? Two massive programmes. Uh, I'd say Brooks have got an incredible system, but Harvard don't normally come over unless they're expecting to win. So it's going to be really interesting to see how this one evolves Harvard. Oh, Harvard just being warned there to go back to the station Harvard. the umpire showing the flag and he's and on the uh, loudspeaker as well on the tannoy trying to get uh, boat Harvard. back Harvard. And the thing is that's not to their advantage they're behind there and they've been the cox has steered them into the dirty water or dirty puddles with brooks so that's not really helping his crew that's putting them under more pressure now Harvard have actually pushed back here, haven't they? So Oxford Brooks's lead is being reduced, but they're not steering the best course. And that's the thing, once he's got out of the puddles, he's given these athletes clean water. They were in dirty water, and that's not what you want as an athlete because it unsettles the blade as it enters the water. And it'll be interesting to see how Harvard move in this second part now. So here we go then, the race boiling up in front of Stewart. Harvard are moving there, Harvard really shifting. They're coming very close to the Oxford Brooks boat, which may interest the umpire. Now they've had to go back out again, and that's cost them a valuable second or two. Again, it was a steering. And that's when Brooks want to respond right there. As soon as you hear the umpire telling the opposing crew to steer, you know that that's going to affect their boat speed. You hit them there. So now, Oxford Brooks digging deep and trying to launch a response, and they're doing that very effectively, although their and lead Harvard is only half it. a length. Harvard Ooh. sneaking up on the Berkshire station. And Brooks under pressure there. They certainly are. This is going to be a hot finish. 
<laughs> finish can't come quick enough for Oxford Brooks University, who have led for most of this race. Harvard have had issues with steering, but they are right in. going through the gears now. Look at that. Digging very deep in the Prince Albert Challenge Cup. Harvard University haven't travelled all the way from America to go out tamely on semi-finals day. And whatever happens now, it won't be a Bowman's looking round. He's got to keep his head still. Harvard are coming. Oxford Brooks University's Bowman Connor Sheridan is aware that they are coming. And now Harvard row right through them and win it on the line. A phenomenal finish from Harvard. The Americans astonishing on the Berkshire station. Collapse in euphoric celebration and Oxford Brooks University will be shattered because they've led that one for 2,100 metres of the race they look like they've got it in the bag and then in the final stroke Harvard University bag a place in tomorrow's final umpiring here at Henley Royal Regatta is such a privilege I've already done dozens of races this week but this so far is my favourite it's women's quads essentially the Netherlands versus Great Britain. The Dutch look really nicely together, don't they? The British, maybe their blade work's not just quite as tidy in this, these first aggressive stages. They will look to settle into more of a rhythm, and I think we're going to be in for a pretty good one. These two crews will be familiar with each other, as we see Matthew Vincent there with the umpire's flag, encouraging the crew from the Netherlands to just steer back onto their station. I think the British are doing a fantastic... They're actually coming back here. Uh, really, really good job. Um, you can see the, where they're steering off the, uh, the V, the, the, the orange V and the circle uh, behind them. But the Brits are moving back. Here we go, Greg. We've got a race on. Yeah, great call, Alex. So you can see the British crew now looking to respond to the early move from the Dutch crew. The Dutch crew still look very calm, look really relaxed. But is there a little bit more aggression coming from the, uh, the crew from Great Britain? This is looking like it's coming down to about a canvas as we're going to see a beautiful overhead shot. Absolutely. Jess Leiden will be leading that crew from the bow seat. She'll be, she'll, she'll be sniffing what's going on on her right-hand side. She'll know that that's crew, that, that crew is there, and she'll be telling her girls, right, we need to go. We need to go now. 36, point, 36 and a half strokes per minute, and they're moving back. But I think the crew from the Netherlands have responded. Oh, Both here we go. Both now at 37 strokes a minute. So the, this Dutch crew have responded. They're a classy crew. They got silver at the European Championships when the British got fifth just earlier on this year. They want to hold them off, hold off this push coming from the British quad, but there's still plenty of racetrack to go. Yeah, as they pass the mile and the eight progress board there, about two feet in it here, Greg. Okay, this is what rowing is all about. This is why you train. This is the moments that you live for. The British are doing a fantastic job. They've got the home crowd next to them. Come on, girls, here we go. The British crowd are going crazy here at Henley Royal Regatta, and it's hard to say whether that quad in the yellow boat from Great Britain is going to come level with the Netherlands in the blue boat. For me, the Netherlands are still holding on to a tiny lead. They're passing the progress board. So I always ahead. think this is 10 strokes to go. 10 strokes to go to the line. They've moved ahead. Charlotte Hodgkin's got the crew just in the lead. They need to hold on. Come on, Charlotte. Here we go. Team GB, here we go. Alex Partridge giving himself away, supporting the British squad, coming down to the line. Here it is, and that's oh. going to be too close to call. The girls look across from side to side. I don't think they know who's won. I can't be sure of who has won. We're going to have to wait for a photo finish, or at least a camera bang on this finish line. We've had some close racing so far in this regatta. What a performance here. You can see this Dutch boat in the shot, and it does just cross the line. So, so close. close. So close. What is that? A foot? Probably less than a foot. That's the, uh, that's the same. 30 centimetres, maybe. Yeah, that's the same verdict that uh, Matthew Pinson won the Athens Olympics in uh, 2004, 0 .008. The King's Cup has been one of the big draws of the regatta this year. This is one of the semi-finals. Well, America have won that comfortably over France. Let's see how the other semi-final got on. That was between Germany and Australia. We see both crews getting away, and uh, as we said, these mixed crews, um, plenty of power, plenty of togetherness, and it is the crew from Germany who are looking to try to get some clear water um, on the crew from Australia, but the Australian crew looks spirited. They've got all that emotion behind them, all those relationships, those families they've spoken to, those experiences they've had, those stories they've heard about the lives that were lived by the people who rode in this boat in 1919, and they're not going to uh, give this one up. 
And the Germans look to be in pretty good control, barring anything going wrong. This is a great race, but also great, a great example of how you row uh, the, uh, the eights event. They got that lead in the first 250 meters, and that's basically what in the margins being the whole way down. You have to, you have to dare put everything on the line at the beginning, um, and then just hold that speed. And I think Germany are going to cross the line just a length ahead. Well, there was strength and power from the German crew. They got the boat up to speed quickly. They got away well, and they crossed the line here, just about a length ahead of the crew from Australia, who now come across the line, and they'll be disappointed, but they should feel proud about what they've done today. Rowing over the course at Henley Royal Regatta to celebrate an anniversary of your win is something of a tradition. 1989, ladies plate, Notts County, they had to win on a re-row 30 years ago. Well done to them. Let's see how this semi-final got on in the ladies' plate. It was another stunning race with a record. And this is a Henley race, isn't it? Side by side on the Saturday at Henley. Half past two on the schedule. The Dutch under-23s here. A little bit smoother, a little bit more relaxation, a bit less aggression. But will this help keep them going down the course, help keep their pace up, I wonder? They look quite relaxed, these guys. There really is something about them right from the start. They've had totally impassive faces, haven't they? Just relaxed, just no gritting of teeth, no movement in those cheeks. They're just smoothly going along, being loose and relaxed, and, and almost like they're enjoying themselves out there, but they won't be. We absolutely know it. And this Dutch crew have just started to ease this out now. It's about half a length. And the Leander crew now, they're going to come back. They probably need to really start making something happen now. If you have a look along these faces, showing just a few more signs of pain. Uh, Richard Hawkins there in the two seats. Uh, but it still looks pretty solid, I think. The problem with these big eights is when you're up in the stern, up in the seven seat, the back of the boat, six seat, seven seat, struggling, you can't see that boat anymore, but the bow is there maybe shouting a word or two, like we're moving, we've got them, they're right here. And that energizes the crew. And once that starts happening, big things can happen. And I think the Leander boys are actually coming right back on them now, Greg. Well, I think they were brave, the Leander boys, Jamie, Stra Jamie stand up in the stroke seat, looked like they tried to take it up early. They went for it early. The Netherlands, I think, responded and checked that move. It looks to me like Leander are going again. They're going again now in front of the grandstand. They're coming towards our commentary position. I reckon it's about a minute left, if that. Can Leander do it? They're kind of sticking there. Can they take another seat? That's what the cox is going to be shouting. Rory Copas in that coxing seat. Can we take one more seat? But the Dutch and 23 seem like they're just holding on here. Well, they're passing the progress board. The Dutch will be hanging on by their fingernails. Don't worry if they look relaxed. They won't be. They'll be hanging on, hoping this finish line is going to come and become begging for this finish line to come. And here it comes. It will appear, and they will hear that beep, and they will know they can stop. They can check the march of Leander, and they have won by about half a length in what was a fantastic race in the ladies' challenge plate. The deck chairs at Henley are also something of an institution, a fantastic view of the racing at the water's edge there, and also apparently quite good for an after-lunch nap. No one will have been asleep here, though, for this semi-final of the PE. At the moment, it's all to play for. Scotch with a slight lead, and that's a very, very interesting move that Scotch have made. St Paul's won't worry too much about that if they're in their zone, but they will have to track and make sure Scotch don't get any more than that, what, a third of a length, because they'll want to be in yeah. contact at the finish. Scotch have made yeah. a pretty good, good move in this race, Kath. Yeah, it was a big move. That was a real power move. I mean, you can see it in the bodies, the, 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 the faces as well of the Scotch crew. That was a big commitment. You can see that, and we'll see down the other end whether they pay for that. They are starting to claw back, but the question is, have they got enough time now and have they got more power? They went out absolutely top rate. What's in the tank now? Can they maintain that really silky technique and find something else when the power is still coming down from those Scotch boys? So the National Schools Champions of Britain, St Paul's College at the top of your picture, Scotch College from Melbourne, nearest to you on the Buckinghamshire station, coming up to the finishing line. It looks like Scotch College's race is about five strokes to go. We're on our finish camera now. Scotch College come up to the finish. They can see St Paul's. They can look back. Two strokes to go. Scotch College of Melbourne will take this heat. Semi-final of the Princess Elizabeth Challenge Cup from St Paul's. Just over half a length of margin. I thought both crews rode fantastically. So that's it for semi-final day for Henley Saturday. We'll all be back tomorrow to see where all these beautiful 
trophies get to end up for another year. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.